morning, everyone. Good morning. I uh, hope you got a bulletin. Please be careful with it. There are a couple of inserts in your bulletin. One is the program from the funeral for Jeff. And then you have a card, looks like this, in there, that they had made up. And of course, you know what's on the back. First John 1 9. <laughs> so we'll remember Jeff with that. And at the end of service, um, well, let me also say that the, the homegrown service is on our website. It's in the bulletin. If you haven't seen it yet or want to see it again, uh, um, and uh, uh, John prayed and gave, uh, uh, it was a prayer um, remarks. And uh, John got the gospel in. And then Sydney was playing, and Sydney sang, God Loves You. And Carolyn sang, and some fat guy was up there preaching. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who that was. Yeah. Hey. But uh, it was a, a good homeborn service. And. Um, <laughs> I think the Lord was honored and Jeff was uh, remembered. So uh, at the end of service today, we're going to show the um, video tribute that was uh, uh, done. If you haven't seen that, we're going to show it at the end today. It's about 12 minutes long, something like that, at the end. Uh, so you can see that. Now, a couple other things we're excited about. I didn't get it into the bulletin, but... Um, uh, uh, the National Christian Choir, and we got two of the representatives here, probably the two best singers in the whole choir. <laughs> I might be a little biased, but... Uh, <laughs> These are fan club presents. Hey, uh, Sydney and Vera. And so that's going to be in Hagerstown City Park, uh, 501 Virginia Avenue, Hagerstown, Maryland, at 4 p.m. Uh, I'm going to talk to Carol, see if we can't get up there. Because Hagerstown... Not, it's not an hour, is it? Oh, yeah. It's an hour? Yeah. Well, so sure. Frederick is coming up, and it's going to be the same concert. We're singing Frederick, but I don't remember what day it is. May something, you know? Um, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. yeah Hagerstown is beyond Frederick? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's an hour. I mean, and it's going to be a nice, sunshiny day. Yes, it is. Pray for it. So yes. we're going to pray for that, pray for the concert. And uh, it's outdoors. Oh my goodness, get your, take your best girlfriend. And your lawn chair. Yeah, and your lawn chair. Lawn chair, your <laughs> blanket or whatever, and come up to Hagerstown. Oh, the, the, boy. The, the concert in uh, Frederick, Frederick is May the 15th, and it's at Frederick Baker Park. Okay, so outdoor concerts. That's, ex that's exciting. I uh, know, yeah, um, yes. How many of you all have, I, I don't think I've ever been there, and this, um, I don't even know if I should even confess this, how many of y'all ever been to, uh, what are the outer, out, outdoor places here? Um, Watkins Park and Bowie, Bowie has no, been, no, 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 no. You mean like Meriwether Post? Yeah, Meriwether Post, Meriwether Post, Meriwether Post, Meriwether Post Meriwether. anybody been there? Yeah, 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 back in the day. I've never been there, what's the other one? Wolf trap. Yeah. Wolf trap. I've never been to that That's one. Way down south, you gotta travel. I was like there too. I yeah. But those are nice venues, though, right. aren't they? Right, right. Yeah. But yeah. I think yeah. they are. There's an amphitheater kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I thought they kind of remodeled of uh, uh, Meriwether, so I don't know what it looks like these days. Yeah, I always hear about things there. I told Carol and I saw something on television today. What? Uh, uh, as soon as we get through this COVID thing. I want to go to the new soccer stadium in D.C., right next to the baseball stadium. It looks really nice. Brent is, what, three, two, two, three years old. I just want to go, just, I want to go sit in the seat. Uh, I think it's a 20,000 state seat, seat stadium, and it looks really nice. Uh, I remember when the Oriole, sta uh, Oriole Park opened in the early 90s, and we went there. Man, that place was, it was really nice. It's hard to believe it's 30 years old, man. You went there when it first opened, John? No. It's an hour and 33 minutes from the 
from here to the next town. Oh, that ain't 78 bad. Miles, 78 miles. Yeah, that ain't bad. That's like going, when I was going down to Cambridge to see Carol's parents. On a half. That's a nice Saturday afternoon drive. <laughs> Let the wind blow in you. Well, if you got hair. <laughs> Let the wind blow through your hair. I mean, some people can't do that anymore. Because they're going to turn 50 tomorrow! Let's sing! <laughs> Alright. Happy birthday to you. Not you. Happy birthday to you. Not you. Happy birthday, Leroy. Happy birthday to you. The big five. <laughs> All right, Leroy. Leroy. Yeah. 5-0. And we're not talking TV show either. <laughs> Michelle said, oh, he's just a young guy. <laughs> she thinks that, oh, he's just a young guy. He's a rookie. What'd you say, John? He's a rookie. Rookie. <laughs> well, John can say that. Uh, all right, so that was, was that everything? Yeah, the concert. Oh, uh, forgot to put this in. Start praying for SEO. It's coming up in June. That's quickly approaching. So we want to be start praying about that ministry. I think that's everything. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the, um, <laughs> the funeral home game was a bunch of, Calendars, so they're out before you if you want one. Uh, if you want a calendar, so they gave it to us, African American calendar. So they're they're out there. And then finally, uh, you know, Todd had put in the obituary about people contributing, uh, sending offerings to the church. And lo and behold, we got a letter in the mail, wow. and we've got two one hundred dollar checks. Wow. <laughs> so it says, um, "In memory of Jeffrey Powell's." And uh, I was going to ask John and Sydney and maybe Keith, do you all know Debbie Ly Leon Hart? No. Okay. Burtonsville, Maryland, so maybe it was one of the bowling buddies or yeah. something like that. But, uh, and I asked Carolyn and she made a suggestion. I just thought, uh, what could we do to um, remember Jeff by, we got a couple hundred dollars. If you have an idea, let me know and see. But anyway, that came and uh, we thank the Lord for that. We'll send them a, a thank you. Uh, as well as uh, got to send a thank you to uh, Barry. to uh, Barry Braun. So I got his letter as well. Hold on to that. Send him a thank you letter for his offering to us last week. And then, like I said, two one hundred dollar checks uh, came in memory of Jeff. Well, praise the Lord, and we do remember him. I'm sure you've been remembering him all week long, as I have. And especially um, over the last uh, three days, um, I watched the Nationals games and I thought about Jeff as I was watching and uh, couldn't call him to say, hey, they won. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, we'll see him again one day. Well, let's uh, start our service today. And we're also glad to have Vera here with us today. We haven't seen her for uh, 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 a minute, and she and Sydney are going to afterwards be practicing in preparation for the concert. So keep them in prayer, and of course, uh, keep her husband uh, in prayer as well, also. So good to see you here, Vera. And uh, <coughs> if by the time we get the special music, <coughs> you feel like singing, <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> we won't stop you. <laughs> if you feel so bubbling up in you, <laughs> Uh, at special music, you just bubble it on out, all right? Or you and sing and do a duo, I don't know, whatever. Well, I'm going to sing today. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm 
I'm gonna, I told you I was going to sing a song that I sang. Oh, wonderful, 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 yes. And uh, I'm sure you all heard it through the service. That was a wonderful rendition that Sydney did. All right, so we start with? Page 59, please. 59. Stand. So let's stand and, and sing. I sing the mighty power of God. This is a new one for me. I sing the chapter 6, verses 10 to 24. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing. Tatiakas, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you, whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, yes. for this day. This is the day that you have made, Lord, and we rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it, this beautiful day that you have 
Allow for us to come today, Lord, to hear from you, Lord God. Lord, we are humbled today by your presence. We are humbled, Lord, by your word. And Lord, we come, Lord, with expectation. And that is to hear from you, Lord God. So we lift up Pastor Lawson today, Father God, as he will deliver your word today to us, Lord. And be with him, Lord, as he reads through your word today, Lord, as he projects his word to us, Lord God. And Father, we just are so thankful, Father, for uh, everything, Lord, that you continually do for us, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, for uh, the blessings, Lord, that, that were sent, Lord, through the people, Lord, uh, to this ministry, Lord. And the gentleman uh, that um, Pastor Lawson taught that sent the $1,000, Lord, to, to bless this ministry, Lord. So, Lord, uh, as we give today, Lord, uh, we are reminded, Lord, of uh, whose we belong to and, and, and who's uh, in charge of everything, Lord. And it is only you, Lord, uh, uh, that provides everything we need. So we give today, Lord, uh, with a heart of love and with a heart of thanksgiving. So, Lord, just receive our um, offerings today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Leroy, for reading the Word of God and praying. And, uh, we're also thankful for the uh, gifts that were given in memory of uh, Jeff Powell's. So I placed them in the offering today. And um, pray God's blessing as we use them to uh, continue to serve Him here. So we're going to ask. You would come on this side. Good morning to Elizabeth. Glad to see you.
Thank you, Sydney. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Reminds me of uh, Wednesday. And I think every time I hear Sydney sing that, I'll, I'll think of Wednesday. to sing at the anniversary. <laughs> God loves you. Oh. <laughs> what a wonderful, wonderful song. And um, <clears throat> Can I just say something? Yes. I actually went um, to the event on Wednesday and I got there probably about five or ten after. And um, it was such, I got, I found joy because there were so many people there at yes. that time. I mean, I'm not talking at the end, I'm talking at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was like, wow. This man was really loved. Yes, he was. And you know, I'm just so grateful to know that I was a part of that love. Yes. I, was, I, I got the experience. I got, to be a part of that love that he, he shared and you know it it, it was it was it was peaceful for me mm -hmm. um seeing him there it, it brought the closure um you know i know where he is but you know look peaceful and you know i just thank god that i will see him again yes it's, it's, Amen. It, it's, it's it was something. It, it, was, it was really moving. It was really moving. I mean, the parking lot was almost full at about 10 after. And there was traffic to get there, and it still yeah. was almost full. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, I asked the funeral director. He said it was. They had 150 of the cards, and they were gone. So he estimated maybe 100 to 125 people. Had, had had come uh, and of course uh, uh, that was partly due to you know Jeff's uh, outstanding uh, career as a professional bowler and so he was known all up and down the East Coast and all of the things that he accomplished there but most importantly he knew the Lord and uh, so we got to celebrate that and uh, Sydney sang, Carolyn sang, John spoke. Um, the uh, Marks were supposed to come, but they got sick. Uh, pray for them. They are recovering. So I say good morning, NCBC and friends. And uh, we're glad to see Vera. Uh, she's rickless today, but that's okay. He's somewhere. <laughs> And we keep both of them in prayer, uh, but we're glad to see you all. Uh, it was nice to see um, Toby last week, wasn't it? Yes. Didn't he look good? Yes, he did. Oh, my goodness. And he's a college graduate now. And then uh, Anaya, oh, my. How beautiful she looked growing up. And uh, this was a blessing. And, but we got the prophet with us today. Hello, prophet. How you doing, prophet? You doing okay? Well, we're glad to see you. We're always glad to see you. Uh, because uh, we love you. You're part of our church family. And we pray for you. You know that? We pray for you to do well in school and pray for you to grow up and to be a man of God. Uh, we pray for you because uh, we love you, Jeremiah. All right? You heard that from the pastor. Okay? All right. And I know your grandfather and all the other family members love you. So, again, good morning. One and all. Question. Are you standing for God today? Are you dressed with the whole armor of God? 
Are you aware today that you are involved in spiritual warfare? The moment you became a Christian, you were thrust into spiritual warfare. You may not have been aware of that then, but you were. At the moment you trusted Christ, you entered into spiritual warfare. These are the matters that Paul is dealing with as he closes the epistle to the Ephesians in chapter 6, 10 to 24, the last section, which Leroy read again uh, for us and into our hearing once again, and we thank the Lord for that and for him. God wants us to stand for him with the whole armor of God on because we are in spiritual warfare. And yet, Paul adds one additional discussion. The issue of prayer. God is saying to us today that in order to stand for him, we must pray to him. Kind of obvious. But it's the one service of most churches that is the least attended the prayer service. If we are to win in the spiritual warfare that we are engaged in, we must be people of prayer. Robert Laws said, quote, prayer is not getting Man's will done in heaven. Prayer is getting God's will done on earth. Let me repeat that for you. Prayer is not getting man's will done in heaven. It is getting God's will done on earth. NCBC. This is what we as Christians are to be committed to. Getting God's will done on earth. Has not the Lord Jesus taught us to pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done, where? On earth, as it is in heaven. On earth. Have you not prayed that many times? So our focus in prayer is getting God's will done here on earth. What does Paul say to the Ephesian Christians about prayer in Ephesians 6, 18 to 20? And as you can see from your bulletin uh, and your notes, you can fill those in right now. Let me just give them to you. First of all, these are the three things we want to briefly discuss today. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Number two. Pray for the saints. Pray for the saints. And number three, pray for God's servants. God's servants. Pray in the spirit. Pray for the saints. Pray for God's servants. Verse 18, the first part of verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication, in the spirit. Paul immediately after instructing the Ephesians to put on the whole armor of God and <coughs> describing <coughs> excuse me, describing each piece says pray at all times with both general and specific prayers. The Greek word for prayer is just prayers in general, but the Greek word supplications is specific prayers. So we're to pray all the time, praying always, at all times. It's another way of saying it. At all times, with general prayers and specific prayers. And what does he mean when he says, pray in the Spirit? Well, first of all, it presupposes something. To pray in the Spirit presupposes that you are saved and have the Holy Spirit. 
For only those who have repented of their sins and trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are given the Holy Spirit. No unbeliever has the Holy Spirit. Only a believer has the Spirit of God. And so he says, pray in the Spirit. You can't do that without the Spirit of God dwelling within you. And so Romans 8 9 says, if we have not the Spirit of Christ, we are none of His. There is no believer without the Spirit of God. The moment you trusted Jesus, God gave you the Spirit. The only reason they tarried for the Spirit back in Acts chapter 2 was the Spirit hadn't been given yet. But the Spirit has come. He came on the day of Pentecost. And he's been here ever since. Hallelujah. And so every person that's born again receives the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God takes us and places us in the body of Christ. And he comes and dwells in us. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. And then you are ready to pray in the spirit. John MacArthur states this. Quote. To pray in the spirit is to pray in the name of Christ. To pray consistent with his nature and will. To pray in the spirit is to pray in concert with the spirit. Who according to Romans 8, 26 and 27. Where it says also helps us. Uh, helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And the Spirit of grace and supplication, as the Holy Spirit is called in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, the Holy Spirit continually prays for us. And for us to pray rightly is to pray as he prays. To join our petitions to his and our will to his. It is to line up our minds and desires with his mind and desire which are consistent with the will of the Father and of the Son. End quote. How do we line up with the mind and the spirit of God? <laughs> the word of God. NCBC, to pray in the spirit, we must be filled with the spirit, controlled uh, by the spirit, and we must be walking in the spirit. Listen to me very carefully. God does not answer prayers not prayed in the spirit. So Paul starts here and says, listen, you've got to pray, but you've got to pray in the Spirit. I think it's 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, where it says, um, well, I'm just going to turn there. 1 Peter 3, I think it's verse 12. Yeah. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his, prayer, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. What's he saying? He's simply saying this. Listen, those who are right with God, those are the ones who have the spirit of God. God hears their prayers. Those who are not right with God, those who are evil, those who are unsaved, they don't have the spirit of God. God doesn't hear their prayers. Now, does that mean God can't hear what they say? Of course he can hear what, he's, what everyone says. He knows what everyone thinks at every moment. But God has no obligation to respond to any request of the unsaved person because they don't belong to him again remember the Lord's prayer how does it start our father what does that presuppose you got a relationship with God Amen. Leroy you listening to them kids that, that live in the neighborhood daddy daddy can I have this like, wait a minute I think y'all confused I'm not your daddy okay when I told him to preach in school, Mr. Lawson, give me some money. Mr. Lawson, I, wait a minute. I'm the school teacher. I'm not your parent. Go talk to your parent. I heard what they were saying, but I, there was no obligation for me to get him money to whatever they wanted. And if John and Paul came up to me, yeah. 
So you have to be in spirit. Let me add this. To pray in the spirit is to pray according to the word of God, which is inspired by the spirit of God. So read the scriptures and pray the scriptures and you will be praying in the spirit and experience answered prayer. First John chapter 5 talks about the fact that we are to pray according to his will. God's will. Well, that's praying in the spirit because the will of God is revealed by the spirit of God and the word of God. And so when I pray the scripture, I can be confident 100%. Now listen, when you pray about other matters, you always have to say, according to your will. Because you don't know. But when you pray the scriptures, you know the will of God because this is the revealed will of God. So when I pray what God has said, I can be confident 100% that God's going to answer that prayer. I can't have that confidence about things that, that I don't know whether they're God's will or not. Listen, no matter how hard you pray for people to get healed, physically healed, you don't know that that's God's will for everybody to be physically healed. You don't know that. I mean, one of the greatest examples of that is, is Johnny Erickson and all those people that prayed for her to get healed. And it wasn't God's will for her to get healed. Listen, you go to 2 Corinthians 12, Paul prayed for himself to get healed three times and God said, no, that's not my will. But when we pray the scriptures, the scriptures are the will of God. And the things that God talks about here. See, it's about getting God's will done on earth. Not about our getting our will done in heaven. I don't pray no more because God don't answer my prayer. Well, perhaps you're not praying according to God's will. See, God is not a utilitarian genie that's in a bottle. And you rub the magic lamp and God pops out and says, what do you want today? No, that's not what prayer is about. It's not about you getting what you want. That's the prostitution of prayer that's promoted by all these false preachers and teachers on television, radio, and other places. You don't manipulate God with your prayers. God is sovereign, not you and I. And God is not obligated to do anything. And he doesn't do anything apart from his will. Even as his children. Listen, you've had your own children and grandchildren. Mama, daddy, papa, dad. And you said, no, I'm not doing that. And for a variety of reasons. You know, it's not the best thing to do for them because they don't understand or whatever. You don't give your kids and, and your grandkids everything they want every time they ask you. If you do, you're a bad parent or a bad grandparent. Because kids ask for stuff that's not good for them sometimes. And guess what? You and I ask God for stuff that ain't good for us either. And he knows. So that's why sometimes God's answer to prayer is no. no. And while we don't like it, no's an answer to prayer. We only want the yes answers. But God knows what's best. Even for those who belong to him, he knows. And his no is the best thing you could get when he said no. And then there wait. Answers as well. Well, if you look at the second part of verse 18, Paul says, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Paul instructs the Ephesians, and God says to us today in the words uh, of Jesus in Matthew 26, 41, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is sweet. And again, Jesus says in Luke 18, 1, that we always ought to pray and not lose heart. You and I are to stay alert. That's what Paul's saying. Uh, uh, 
stay alert, and to persevere in prayer because Satan wants to defeat us, destroy us, and to diminish our testimony and witness to others. And so, we need to pray for the saints. In other places, Paul tells Christians to pray for authorities. And he tells them to pray for the unsaved. But here in Ephesians, he instructs us to pray for the saints. Pray for the saints. So the question should arise, how should we pray for the saints? And then we must consider the context of which this uh, uh, statement is made. It's in the context of spiritual warfare. It's in the context of spiritual warfare. Now listen to me. Uh, you got, I hope you take this the right way. It's wonderful to pray. It, it, it's, it's okay to pray for people who are sick. It's okay to pray for people's financial situation, their job situation, and all those things. And all of the kinds of prayers that we pray. And for the most part, they dominate our prayer times. But the most important prayers you can ever pray are for the saints and for them to win in the spiritual warfare that they're always engaged in. Always engaged in. So how should we pray according to this context? Let me give you eight things real quickly. And we've talked about every one of them. First of all, you need to pray for fellow believers to stand for God. That's what this whole series is about, standing for God. To stand for God. Secondly, to put on and keep on the whole armor of God. Because in order to stand, you've got to have the armor of God on. And then we've discussed each of the pieces of the armor. So third, you should pray that uh, your fellow uh, 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 believers live according to the truth. That, that belt of truth, pray that your fellow believers live according to the truth. Why? Because God only blesses the truth. God's a God of truth. He, he doesn't bless anything outside of the truth. He doesn't bless lies. And lies don't bring any benefit to anybody's life. So we need to be praying for our fellow brothers and sisters that they live according to the truth. Also, the breastplate of righteousness, we need to pray that our fellow brothers and sisters live righteous lives. Righteous lives. I mean, the Bible is full of stories, and you and I know people, and, and even in our own life, we haven't always done what's right. So what should you be praying for? Pray that you live, that your fellow brothers and sisters live righteous lives. Because the temptation is to do wrong. And Satan is always throwing those darts at us. To choose to do wrong. He threw them at, at, at Adam and Eve. He got them to do wrong. Fifth. Pray that you live a life of peace. Because you see, once you trust Christ, you have peace with God. And then as you go through your life, have you, have you, do you listen to Leroy's prayers? I listen to him. He, he talks a lot about praying about uh, 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 the peace of God. I've heard him mention that on several occasions. And listen, we need the peace of God. Pray that your fellow... See, you have peace with God when you trust Christ. But you only have the peace of God when you're trusting the Lord as you go through day by day. So we, we need to be praying for one another to trust God so we experience peace. Listen, because there's always turmoil going on all around us. Six, to live by faith. The shield of faith... To live by faith and not by sight or emotions. And it's easy to fall into that. Satan throws his darts. The temptations come. Don't walk by faith. Walk by what you see. Deal, respond to life based on how you, how you feel. Your emotions. And all of us are subject to those temptations. So we need to be praying for one another to walk 
by faith. Listen, that's one of the biggest challenges in the Christian church today, to walk by faith. Because there's so much uh, emotion that, that's being promoted in the church today. And you even hear the way Christians talk a lot. And a lot of their statements start with, I feel, or I don't feel. You know God is here with us right there, don't you? Amen. And I hope it's not because you feel something. Because the Bible teaches God is an omnipresent God. That's how I know he's here. Well, I don't feel nothing. And with my five senses, I cannot experience God. I don't see God. I don't uh, 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 hear God. Uh, uh, I don't smell God. I can't touch God. I can't taste God. So how do I know God's here? Because I walk by faith. Amen. Not because I, you know, I, I feel something. And a lot of that has infiltrated the church. This, listen, this is all Satan inspired. Because God says walk by faith and Satan doesn't want you to walk by faith. He wants you to walk by how you feel or what you see. Seven, to live, pray for one another, to live in the hope of salvation. That's the helmet of salvation. It's not pray that a believer gets saved. That, that's, you ain't praying for a believer to get saved. They already say You're praying for them to live in the hope of salvation. What's the hope? Jesus coming back. So that circumscribes how I live my life every day. Because I know he can come back right now. And so John says in 1 John 3, we that have this hope, we purify ourselves. Why do you stop sinning? Why should I stop sinning? Listen, he could come at any moment. I don't want to be ashamed when I meet him. And when I do sin, you know what? Don't spend a whole lot of time and, and let a whole lot of time grab Jeff's verse. Confess your sin. You don't want the Lord to show up and you got to unconfess sin as a believer. And so the hope of salvation, listen, what, and I said, you heard, I said the devil, listen, you, God comforts those who belong to him. And the reason why you can get up tomorrow is you have the hope of salvation. You got the hope of seeing Jeff again. That's how you can keep going. Listen, people don't have no hope. That's why they got to anesthetize themselves with alcohol and drugs and all that other stuff. But we don't need that because we have a hope. And as one writer said, you can live a few minutes without water and air. You can go a, a, a period of time without bread. But, and, and you can go a few moments without air. But you can't go one second without hope. What is suicide? The person says, I got no hope. And God says, you and I are to live by hope. And so we need to be praying for one another that we don't lose sight of the hope that we have in Jesus. Because this enemy is always tempting you to say, you ain't got no hope. That he's not going to change. It's not going to get any better. God doesn't care. God doesn't love you. But see, we have hope. And Romans 15, 13 says, God is the God of hope. Don't forget that. That's why you need to keep reading your Bible because you can't memorize everything. Well, maybe. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> so you need to keep... Man, I was reading the story of, of Moses yesterday. I'm in Exodus again. Oh, my goodness. God said, take your shoes off this ground. It's holy. He says, and I'm sending you down there to do this and this and that. He said, well, what did they ask me what your name is? He said, tell them, I am sent you. Not I was or I will be. God is the I am God. Amen. Amen. So that, that'll strengthen, you, strengthen your spine. <laughs> that'll, that'll help you. He's the I am God. And then finally, to live with the 
sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So here are the eight things I want to pray for other believers to stand for God, to put on and keep on the whole armor of God, to live according to the truth, to live a righteous life, to live a life of peace, to live by faith, to live in the hope of salvation and to live according to the word of God. That's why we promote the word of God here. Listen, I can say a whole lot of things to you, but <laughs> God's word is what you need. Jesus said, man, don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Amen. Our words can help, but listen, they can't sustain like God's word can. Amen. God's word sustains. It gives life and then it sustains it. Again, John MacArthur makes a, just a tremendous statement. He says, quote, our greatest concern for others should be for victory in the battle against the enemy of our souls. Our deepest prayers for our spouse, our children, our grandchildren, our brothers and sisters, our fellow church members, our pastor, our missionaries, and all others would be that they win the spiritual battle against Satan. And we're always in spiritual battle. Because Satan don't ever give up. <laughs> He's not going to stop until God confines him in the pit and then finally throws him into the lake of fire. MacArthur goes on to say, if you examine Paul's prayers in his epistles, you will find that he prayed for the spiritual well-being of the people of God. And he gives examples, 1 Corinthians, Philippians, Colossians, and 2 Thessalonians. Yes, I, I, need, I, I can pray for you for your health and, and your job and your finance and all that, but I need to be praying for your spiritual well-being. I need praying for you to have victory against the enemy who relentlessly attacks us. Finally, in verses 19 and 20, we want to pray for God's servants. So Paul says this in verse 19. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Note Paul requests the Ephesian Christians to pray for him. Yes, Paul was an apostle, pastor, preacher, missionary, and evangelist. But he knew that he needed the prayers of the saints. He knew that. All Christians need the prayers of other Christians, whether you're a leader or not. I need your prayers, NCBC. Pray for me. What did Paul want them to pray about? It was not about his physical condition. And what was that? He was chained to a Roman soldier in a prison in Rome. And uh, I don't think he had modern accommodations in that prison. Okay? I don't think it was a comfortable place for him to be. But he said that wasn't his concern. His prayer, his prayer request was for boldness to preach the gospel. Boldness to preach the gospel. Turn your Bible to Acts chapter 4 very quickly. Acts 4. This is one of the great prayers of the Bible. Because this is what the apostles prayed for. Acts chapter 4, I'm going to start at verse 23. Uh, they had been arrested by the uh, uh, Jewish leadership. And uh, uh, then, because they had healed uh, uh, the man in Acts 3, the lame man. And, um, and they were uh, threatened uh, not to continue to uh, uh, teach in the name of Jesus. And so they were let go. And verse 23 says, And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, And look what they prayed. Lord, you are God. And, and remember I told you, you see Genesis 1 throughout the Bible. What's the next thing they say? You are God who did what? You made heaven and earth. 
and the seed and all that is in them who by the mouth of your servant David has said, why do the nations rage? He's quoting Psalm 2, verses 1 and 2. And the people plot vain things. The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed with, uh, you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. That's because God saw him. Verse 29. Now Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all, say it with me, Whoa. boldness, they may speak your word by, by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Now listen to me very carefully. They pray for boldness to speak the word of God. They have been threatened to not speak the word of God. They prayed for boldness to speak the word of God. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, they, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. boldness. God answered the prayer because it was according to his will. So here we have Paul, some years later, in, in prison in Rome, he prayed and he said, I'm not, I'm not asking you to pray that I get released. I'm not asking you to pray for uh, uh, um, the physical suffering I'm experiencing right now. I'm asking you to pray that I would boldly speak the gospel. Because he was going to have to go before Nero uh, and he was talking to the... because. They would rotate the guards every eight hours or so. So he was praying for boldness to every time they rotated, share the gospel again and pray that he would speak with boldness. What should you pray for pastors, preachers, missionaries, evangelists? Boldness to preach, proclaim, declare, present the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Romans 1, 16, you know it as well as I do. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is what? The power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For in it, in the gospel, is the, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. N.C. Uh, B.C. We need to pray for Leroy and for those who will go with him this summer to proclaim the gospel to Lanham and new character. We need to start praying now. God prepare people's hearts. But give Leroy the boldness to lead the team that's going to take the gospel to New Carrollton and Lanham this, this summer. In June, July, and August. Listen, because the enemy's going to fight that. He's going to discourage you. Brother. He's going to say, well, you don't need to go out there. One time I came and nobody was here. Well, maybe I just went home. And I was driving back. I said, no, I'm going to stop. And I stopped and I talked to some guy on the bike. And guess what? Leroy drove up. He said, Pastor, what you doing? I said, well, you know, I got here late. And he said, I said, well, you know, supposed to be passing out tracks. And he said, I'll go with you. I said, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Leroy and I did whatever that section was up there. And we pass out them gospel tracts and share the gospel with people. Listen, the enemy will discourage you. And all kinds of things come into your mind. So we need to be praying for Leroy. NCBC, we need to keep praying for our missionaries. You know those missionaries on that list? We need to pray for them to faithfully proclaim the gospel in the places where God has sent them. Listen, you are not, not over there. We don't know what they're facing on a daily basis. They don't tell us everything. We don't know what they're going through in South Africa and in Japan and, and, and Katie's going through over in South America or, 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 or Valerie Gray is dealing with it down in Florida. All the crocodiles down in Florida are, 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 are on animals. Okay. Paul talked about fighting beasts in, in Ephesus. He was talking about people. Okay. NCBC, I need you to pray for me to faithfully and fearless proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ both here and wherever God opens a door to preach 
the gospel. NCBC, God calls us to pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray for the saints. And pray for the servants of God so that we might win victory over Satan. For Christ in this spiritual warfare that we are all in. To the glory of God. Amen. amen. And amen. A post thought is there. Paul talks about the fact that. That. Uh, he says there that. Uh, verse 20. For which I am an ambassador. This is. Uh, uh, the Second Corinthians five twenty is the other place where the word ambassador is used, and you know what an ambassador is? It's a representative of someone, and we're the representatives of God. Amen. 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 Well, let's pray, and then we'll have the post loop. Father, thank you that we can pray, and we can pray in the Spirit because you have given us the Spirit of God. Forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of our unrighteousness, and fill us with your Spirit. May we. Walk in the Spirit. And may we pray in the Spirit according to your holy word, your holy will. And I pray for my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ assembled here today that you would give them victory in the spiritual warfare that they're engaged in. Lord, may we continue to lift one another up. I pray for Leroy as he leads SEO this coming summer. I pray that you will give him the boldness, the courage to lead and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, I pray for all who will work with him and encourage him as they go forth to do your will. Lord in heaven, I pray for other servants, other pastors, preachers, and evangelists. Pray for men like Dr. John McArthur and Dr. Tony Evans. Franklin and Will Graham, just some of the men who go forth to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray for our missionaries, Valerie Gray and Katie, uh, and our missionaries uh, in the other places, Tom Fox and Addie Williams and the Luthies and the Willoughbys. Oh Lord, bless them. Give them boldness to proclaim the gospel to the people in the lands where you have sent them. Oh God, help us to be a praying people. Help us to be a people who demonstrate our dependence upon you because we realize that without you we can do nothing. And we believe that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So may we continue to pray, pray, and pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
died unexpectedly at one point. Uh, that was his mother in law, what you're saying? What? That was Devin's. Yeah, okay. Um, just for another time. I think that must be Devin's mother in law on the right again. In the, in, in the chapel. Okay, chapel, okay. Mm -hmm. First wedding I did was in the chapel as well. Look at Tom. next door to him. Okay, right. Right over here off of uh, Prince Garden Parkway. tournament after him. Wow. <laughs> He's 
I think that's net. So this was 2016 when it went into the Maryland Athlete Hall of Fame. You all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.